it's only the beginning because we will sustain the outreach to the community through our World for the World family members who live in the community throughout 2023 and beyond. As you sow so in generosity, may our good, good Lord bless you richly.
Praise. Good morning, church. A wonderful Sunday morning to one and all. We're about to uh, start our worship service. Let's give God a clap of praise. Hallelujah. As we stand, let us form a small groups for our fellowship prayer. Thank you so much.
Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him uh, with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the sound of cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
worship you in this place. Hallelujah. Let us give God the worship that is due Him. We praise your holy name.
you know, sometimes it's easy to forget how good God is. Sometimes we get caught up in our difficulties, our struggles. They're they're real, but sometimes they overwhelm us, don't they? And we worry, and we're afraid. Sometimes all we can see are the hard times things that still need to be done, the things that we, we, we don't know what's going to happen. And man, I, I think today what a beautiful job to remind us. You know, unfortunately, a scripture probably we don't use enough except at Christmas time that his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father. I mean, do do we stop and think? We serve a mighty God who the Bible says nothing for him is impossible. Nothing with him is impossible. We serve a prince of peace who at any moment can step into our lives, even in the middle of the storm, just like Jesus on the boat, and he can say, peace, be still, and the storm goes away. But even better than that, Even if the storm rages, he can say, peace be still to your heart. And inside the storm can calm. So I want us to do something. I I, I want them to sing that last song one more time. When you think about that, all my life you have been faithful. Can, 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 Can you just for a moment push aside the needs of today and tomorrow? And you, can you just remember how God has met everyone? That he has been there in your yesterdays, that you are still standing, that you are still here, that God has proven himself faithful over and 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 over. And maybe just for a moment, maybe, maybe you want to sing along. Maybe you don't want to even sing as they sing. Maybe you just want to say, God, thank you. Thank you that you have been good. Thank you that you have brought me through. Thank you for answering this prayer and thank you for answering that prayer. And Thank you that you have chosen to love me and thank you that you have never let me on my own and thank you that you have seen me through and thank you that you made a way when there seemed to be no way. I'm telling you, it'll change you when you get your focus off all the issues and you say, all right, just for a moment, I'm gonna thank God all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been good can we do that again can we sing that last song one more time and let's just take some time from our hearts and let's thank our heavenly father for his goodness today let's sing that i love you lord for your mercy never fails me all my I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful So, so
I just lift your people up to you today. God, may we be overwhelmed by your goodness. Your word even tells us it's your kindness that leads to repentance. You came to love us, to heal us, to restore us, to forgive us, to give us life, to give us a future, to secure our eternity with you, to help us be victorious to be more than conquerors, to overcome whatever we face in this world. And and your word says that even when we are not faithful, you remain faithful. You never let us down. You never break a promise. You never change your word. You are faithful to everything you have said. And Father, when we stop and we look at our yesterdays, we see that you have been at work. Sometimes when we look at today or tomorrow, we forget. Lord, may may, may you give us the grace. May you give us the understanding, the belief, that the God who was faithful yesterday, we can trust him with tomorrow. You will always, 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 always fulfill your word. So Lord, I lift up your people to you. The apostle Paul wrote that we come and we give thanks, but he also lets us know to come and to ask for what we need, to lay our needs before you. So, Father, you know each need represented here today. You know the battles, you know the struggles, the worries, the fears. You know the guilt and the shame when we give in to temptation and we carry it with us. You know the battles of bitterness, unforgiveness. You know the struggles with those who are are mourning the loss of people or things this past year. So God, we just invite you in to do what only you can do. Begin to work in their hearts. Begin to remind them of the hope that they have in you. Begin to remind them of the faithful God that you are. Begin to let them know how much you love them. And you are here today to meet with them. And you are here today to encourage them and give them peace. And you are here today to let them know it's going to be okay. That you are walking this journey with them. You have not forgotten them. But you are at work in ways they cannot see. And you will fulfill your word in their life. Thank you. Thank you (laughs) that as that song says, your goodness runs after us. We know we're not worthy of it. And sometimes we miss it and don't see it. But thank you that you pursue us because you desire a relationship with us. Speak to our hearts today, Lord, as we continue this time of worship with you, as we dig into your word today, Lord. Remind us who you are. And when we leave this place, may we leave having left our burdens and our fears and our worries behind. May we leave being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we leave changed because we have a relationship with you. And may we go from this place and shine the light of Christ everywhere we go. Speak to our hearts today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. We just give the Lord praise today. Amen. Amen. Hey, just before you're seated, turn around, say hi to somebody, give them a fist bump, a wave, let them know that you're glad they are here this morning and you may be seated.
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love to see you guys interact. You may be seated. Hey, in just a few moments, we'll be uh, having the opportunity to worship God in our giving, right? Bringing God the tithe, giving our offering from our hearts to Him. Um, There's an envelope there in your Sunday Word. If you give by envelope, we got a moment before the ushers come. You can fill that out. If you give online, there's directions there also in the Sunday Word um, of how you can do that. There's also a, a prayer request card and a praise report card in there. And if there's anything that you would like someone to be praying with you about, please let us know. We have teams of people that pray for you uh, throughout the week, lift up your needs before God. And when God is at work, when you have something to thank him for, would you let us know that too? We love to hear um, how God is at work in your life. And so in just a moment, you can drop all of that in the offering basket as it comes by. Just before we do that, I would like to recognize, don't worry, I'm not gonna call you out, make you come up front or anything, but, but if you are a first time guest today and you don't mind, would you just slip up your hand so we can just be thankful that you are here? We got any first time guests here with us today? I mean, yes, right over here is a couple over here. Anybody up in the balcony? Thank you guys so much. Can we just welcome our guests with us today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are honored to have you. Uh, and I know we don't always get to point out all of our special guests because all of you are special, but today we, we do have some very special guests with us Um, Pastor Connie and Sister Delia, who you know have served Word for the World. Wait, wait, wait. They're not the special guests. They're part of the family, okay? You can clap for them, though. It's okay, all right? They're with us. But we also want to welcome their son and daughter and their family, Dina, Carrie. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Can we welcome them? They are here to celebrate. Uh, From what I've heard, there's this really big golf tournament coming up. Uh, in this family where it it gets a little competitive, I think. So we may need to be praying uh, for them. But man, we are so honored that you guys are here with us today. All right, let me go ahead and ask our rushers if they'll get ready. You can drop your offering, your prayer request cards in the offering bucket. And during that time, our worship team is going to just lead us in another song. Let's worship in our giving today.
so much. Hallelujah. Let us pray for our tithes and love offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are an answering God. Father, as we wrote those prayer requests, we know that an answer is coming because you are faithful. And we thank you so much, Lord, for the answered prayers, Lord God. Each and every person's faith here has increased because you have been gracious to us. Heavenly Father, we pray for the tithes and the love offerings. We thank you for we are able to give. Lord, that gift of giving came from you. It's not from us. And we thank you for prompting our hearts to give to you. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for reminding us that you love a cheerful giver. And each and every person here who has given will receive from you more than what, have, what we have given to you. And we thank you so much, Lord God, for the opportunity. Father, we pray for wisdom upon our leaders that they may use these funds, Lord God, in a wise way, Lord God, to spread your word to all of the world. We thank you so much, Lord God, for giving us leaders who are dedicated to serve you and to give everything to advance your kingdom in this place. We love you and give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful, man. I love uh, worshiping with you as you worship with all your hearts. It is one of the things I believe from the very beginning that makes Word for the World who we are. Is It is a group of worshipers worshiping God with everything they have. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the way that you worship our Heavenly Father. Hey, just before we get in the message today, let me just give you a couple of things that are coming up next week, next Sunday. We're going to have a, a few special Christmas elements as we head towards Christmas. So I hope uh, you will be here, bring some friends. It's going to be a wonderful time to, uh, to begin to celebrate uh, all that Christmas is. And then the next Sunday is Christmas. Every now and then, Christmas falls on a Sunday, and people are always wondering, well, what are you going to do about church, or we're traveling, or all of those things. So, so here's what we're going to do. On Christmas Sunday, we're going to have one service, a joint service. So those in the morning and in the afternoon, we're going to ask everybody to come together at 9 o'clock. So it's a little bit earlier because we know some of you have uh, things that you're headed to. We want to honor that also. We want to take that time on that day to honor the whole reason, right, we have Christmas. So, so you should see that on our Facebook page or uh, updating our, our, our website with some of our holiday Times so of Christmas at nine o'clock. And then the next Sunday, which is January 1, we're, we're going to go right back to normal. We, we understand 
people travel and all of that, but we're going to go right back to our normal times at 10 and 3 um, as we launch the new year. Um, I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but I don't want to keep you informed. January 8th, we're going to start uh, 21 days of prayer. We're going to do a, a message series on prayer. What a, what a wonderful day to start, uh, what a wonderful way to start the year about how we can connect with God. We've got a booklet that we're having printed that we're going to give you on that day that we really believe will just help you in your prayer life. Um, and we're going to culminate that with a, a week of fasting and then a prayer service here at the end of the month. Um, so you'll be getting information about all of that. Man, I am excited about what God is going to do here in 2023. We, we had to lock down. The enemy does everything he can to keep us apart and destroy the church. But God says that he will, right, found his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So we, we are going to take that as they tried, they lost, right? So here we go. We've had this year of gathering again. Next year, we're going to build towards the future. Uh, a couple of things that we're doing in the new year that might be a little bit different uh, is we're really going to encourage you to find a small group to be in. Um, we, got, we got small groups that are being formed. They're going to meet at different locations around our city. So hopefully there'll be one near enough you that even if you can't make it all the way back to the building during the week, you can find a group, ladies groups, men's groups, couples groups, family groups. Um, and, and we're just going to ask them very simply to go over last Sunday's message. That's going to be the foundation of the groups. They, they, they may evolve from there. They, they, they may talk about some other things as the needs of the group, but it gives us all a basis to begin to discuss and go deeper in the Word because we believe relationships foster discipleship. Discipleship happens best in relationships. And relationships happen better in circles than in rows, right? It's hard to have a relationship when you're looking at the back of someone's head and it's a lot easier when you're able to be face-to-face -face and discuss. So, so we're really going to begin to promote that and push that. doesn't mean we won't have events here, trainings here, um, ways that we can go deeper. We're going to be putting them on the calendar. But we really, really, really want you to begin to connect to a small group. And the other thing is we're going to begin to open the doors for serving opportunities. Um, and we'll let you know how you can join and how uh, we want to make it simple for you to join. The Bible actually tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that God places in the church, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. Do you know why? It's, it's not just to teach. It's not to be the one here on stage. It says to equip God's people, the saints, us, for works of ministry, right? So, so part of our role is to help you find a place to serve, not just to teach you, to help you find a place to serve. The, the reason it's so important is if you read that passage, again, Ephesians chapter 4, if you want to write it down and read it, it goes on to say, so that the body may be built up, so that you may be mature. Who wants to be mature in Christ? All of us, right? So that we may grow up, so that we won't be blown about by winds of doctrine. Now, I think it's amazing. It doesn't say you sit in a class and you learn so you won't be blown about by winds of doctrine. That's important. But it says you want to really go strong, you find a place to serve. You find a place to give back. It's all tied in to that. So we're going to try to make it easy. You don't, you don't have to come every Sunday and say, well, I work some Sundays or I can't make it every Sunday or sometimes I just want to be in church. We want to honor that. So we're going to set up a system where maybe you can serve twice a month. Maybe you don't have to be there, you know, seven times to be able to serve. Uh, one of the ways we're doing it, you saw the beginnings of it this morning, is we're starting with just what we call praise singers. So if you say, man, I love to sing, but I, right now with work schedule, family settling in, I, I can't make it every week to practice singing. Like, That's okay. You let us know. We'll send you the songs the week before. All you got to do is be ready, show up on Sunday, stand up on the risers, and sing from your heart, right? Just, just a way. People that have a, a love for that but haven't been able to connect because maybe it felt like, well, there's, it, it's just too much for me right now. Man, we, we want to make it to where you can connect with a ministry opportunity here. Greeters, ushers, working with our kids ministry um, to where you say, okay, I, I don't, I don't want to volunteer and then disappear every week. We want you to volunteer and serve and still be able 
to be a part of what God is doing in here. So please be on the lookout for that. I know, I know that's a lot this morning, but I, I want you to know we believe in this. Right? When, when you find family, which often happens in a small group or sometimes even on a serving team, and you find your purpose, a way to serve and a way to give back, I'm telling you, it will change your life. Right? It's, it goes beyond just showing up at church on Sunday to say, this is my home, and God is active in my life, and I can see how he is working. So I'm looking forward to all that we're going to be doing in 2023. All right, today I want to continue using, the, this will be the last Sunday, but just using that um, song, Oh Holy Night. And I just, just want to pull out a line of that in a moment. And I want to encourage you with how much God is for you. And when you believe that, when you act on that, when you trust in that, how it changes Every day it changes how you live. I want to start with this. So, so all through the Bible, you find stories of Jesus coming, whether they be a scripture here or, or, or a passage. And we're most familiar with Matthew and Luke, the Christmas story. But I love the way that John gives us the Christmas story. So let me start with this. John chapter 1, reading a few verses from John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And let me just add to that, we'll never overcome it, right? I mean, we know the victory that God has, the true light which shines on all people was coming into the world. The light came to his own people and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become God's children. Born not from blood or from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory. Glory like that of a father's only son full of grace and truth. Man, what a beautiful rendering of the Christmas story. God sends his son, Jesus steps into our world, and in that moment, everything changed. Now, now, now we read that. My, my guess is most of us here today are probably followers of Christ. We, we've probably surrendered our life to him, and, and we hear that, and we know that, and we agree with that, but so often in our lives, we kind of live as if this didn't happen. As, as, as if it's still a, well, not yet, right? Not, not the birth of Christ, but actually God stepping into our world and changing everything. Somehow we've developed this concept or this idea that our relationship with God is kind of still far away. It's, it's not really happened yet. He hasn't changed everything yet. He's far off, right? It's kind of like it's on hold. Kind of, I don't know if you've ever been to um, a, an amusement park or a carnival or uh, maybe you've had the privilege of traveling to Disney World somewhere. But, but maybe if you haven't ever been, maybe you've seen them. Sometimes you know how when it's really crowded, the lines get really long, and you could stand in line for an hour, an hour and a half. And we think, one day I'm going to ride the ride, just not yet. I'm still in the line. And, 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 and we kind of do that in our relationship with God. One day I'll have a good relationship with God, but I'm, I'm still in line. I'm still here. Here's how we do the, the line. I'm still trying to prove myself. Still trying to show God that I'm worthy of him stepping into my life. I'll get to God when I'm good enough. Just, just not, not yet. I'll find peace with God, but after all I've done, not yet. Right? It, it's never a now God stepping into my life. It's a 
He said, not yet. You know, we've been talking about uh, some lines from O Holy Night, the soul felt its worth, um, the weary world rejoices. So for today, from that beautiful Christmas song, it says, O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error, pining. You, you, know, you know what the word pining means? I, I don't know always if the English translates in, 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 in ways that it's understood. Uh, pining means brokenhearted suffering. It means this, 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 your, your, your life has been crushed and you're longing for something Else. You're longing for something more. And so, so the writer of this Christmas song says the, the, the sin and the error, right, that had happened in God's people. Remember from the close of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, there's a long time where God is silent. So all they're left with, they're struggling. Their sin, is God still there? Is he active? And the sin and the error of the world and their heart broken and their longing. Right? It's like they're in, in line for the ride, but it's not yet. It's like us in our walk with God. He's somewhere out there, but we feel like it's not yet. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. And look at this next phrase. Till he appeared. You, you, you know what that means? That means Christmas turns the not yet into the now, right? Long lay the world, pining, longing, suffering, wishing it could be different. And then Jesus steps into our world and it changes this time of waiting to saying, the time is now. It changes everything. Christmas lets us know the not yet has become now. That God is no longer out there somewhere. That God is not distant and far off. That he has now stepped into our world for all time. And he welcomes us into his presence now. The, the, the gospel writer Luke, is, as he's telling the story of Jesus' birth, and introduces us to this man named Simeon. And in some mysterious way, God had spoken to Simeon. And told him, you will not die until you see the Savior. The Bible says Simeon was waiting on the consolation of Israel. You know what consolation means? Like when, 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 when all has gone wrong, this, this, this idea that comfort has come, change has come. So he'd been waiting a long time for the Messiah so Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus to him, to the temple. Simeon takes the child in his arms in Luke chapter 2, picking up in verse 28. It says, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. You know what he was saying there? He said, I can die happy Right? He's like, he's like you, you, you let me stay alive long enough to see this moment. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Now, if you were to go back in the Greek and translate word for word what Simeon said, do you know what he says? It actually starts with this. It says, now. Now the wait is over. It's that same thought of the not yet has turned in to now. He says, now consolation has come. Now the sin and the error, the longing to be made right with God. He said, now this moment, everything has changed. Matthew writes it like this in Matthew 1, verse 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. And you know what Emmanuel means, right? Emmanuel means God with us. You ever, you ever stop to think about that? 
Instead of God just always saying, hey, you need to come with be with me, God says, listen, I get it. You're never going to be good enough. You never can work hard enough. You're never going to be righteous enough on your own. So instead of just telling you, come be with me, he said, I'm going to come be with you. I love you so much. I'm going to send my son. He's going to step out of heaven. He's going to step into your world so that we could have a relationship with him. I just thought of this illustration. Didn't write it down, so hopefully this is for somebody here. There was a man, didn't believe in God, didn't believe in church, didn't believe in the Bible, but his wife was was a Christian. It was Christmas Day, and uh, it was snowing, so they lived where it was cold, and it was a hard cold, and snow on the ground, and everything was frozen, but it was time for church. And so his wife says, honey, I'll, I'll be back in a little while. I'm going I'm to go to church to worship on Christmas Day. He says, fine, fine, fine. I, I don't believe I mean, it. God doesn't care about us. And so she leaves. It keeps snowing. It's cold and cold and cold and everything is frozen. All of a sudden, he starts looking out his window and there's the birds have begun to come into his yard but they can't find anything because the snow has covered the ground. Everything's frozen. And so he says, oh, what, what, what do I do to, to help, help all these little birds? They're, they're, they're dying, they're, they're, they're starting to starve. They can't find food anywhere. So he runs out into his yard to help them and you know what would happen as he ran into his yard, all the birds flew away. And, oh. So he kind of goes back in and the birds come back and they're looking for food and they're starving for something. Just, just, just some bread, something. He goes, oh, I know, I know what I'll do. I'll, do I'll go and open the barn. It's warm in there. There's food in there. So he goes and opens the barn, and he runs over to the birds, and he shoes them, tries to shoo them into the barn. And, of course, all the birds don't understand this big man that's waving his arms, and so they fly away again, and he's distraught. He's thinking, oh, these birds, they will never understand me. And he thought for a moment, he goes, oh, just for a moment, I could become a bird. I would tell them how to find life. And the story goes, the illustration goes, at that very moment, the church bells rang. And all of a sudden, he realized, this is why God sent Jesus. God's so big sometimes and far off and distant that we miss and we don't understand. We're a little bit afraid and we run from him because we don't understand what he's doing. But he takes the form of a human, steps into the world of starving, lost men and women. That as much as God had been trying to help, we keep running in other directions. And he says, listen. I'm going to step in. I'm going to speak your language. I'm going to show you what God is like so that your life could be forever changed. This this is how much God loves us. He chooses to step into our world. Emmanuel, God with us, turning the not yet, this distant, that God's out there somewhere, into Now we get to have a relationship. Now, today, not not far off, not waiting for us to make ourselves worthy. Him stepping into our world. Now God is here. Now I'm not alone. Now I can have hope. Now I can go on. Now I can have strength. God with us. But what, what, what I want you to leave with today is not only is God with you, because I think a lot of us know that, I want to remind you that not only is God with us, God is for us. See, a lot of times we, we think we're for God, but we're not sure if he's for us. We, we, think, we think, well, God kind of stands off somewhere, and all he's doing is looking for us to fail. And I think we, we misunderstand what our heavenly father is like. The, the message of the gospel, the message of his word, that he is for us. And, and, and I want to help you because if you can believe that, belief leads to hope, hope that changes how we go through every day. And when you believe that God is for you, it makes a huge difference in how you live every day of your life. Now listen, I believe God is for you. I don't believe God is for everything that you are for. 
that make sense? God, God is for you, but sometimes we choose to believe other things that aren't godly. It doesn't mean that God is for that. But that doesn't change the fact that God is for you. God, God being for you doesn't mean he approves of every choice that you make. You can love somebody and not approve of their choices they make. See, what, what, ha- what has happened is the world has robbed us of this distinction. And, and it's why people even have a hard time understanding how God can love them but still want to change their life. God being for you doesn't mean he approves of everything. We think unless everything we do is accepted, you don't really love me. How much, how much further from the truth could that be? Are are there people in your life that you love, but you don't approve of every decision they make? Of course there are. Are are, are there people in your your life that you love, but you don't approve of everything? You don't accept everything that they do? Of, Of course there are. If you've ever had kids, you understand this. You ever had your child tell a lie? Did you approve of them lying? Oh, no, no, it's totally okay. I just let them grow up and be a liar. You ever had someone you love steal something? Do they come to you and go, unless you accept me as a thief, you don't really love me. You'd be like, no, I love you enough to tell you you're going to end up in jail. And so it works itself out in our everyday life. So now when it comes to Christianity, people come and say, oh, if you don't accept me, you don't love me. And they're like, no, no, no. As a matter of fact, I, I love you so much that I need to tell you the way you're headed is going to destroy your life. Now, does that make people upset? Of course it does, but it doesn't mean we don't love. Just because God doesn't approve of your sin doesn't mean God doesn't love you. He wants something better for you. He came to be with us. He came to be for us. Let me read some verses, and, 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 and then we're going to look at how we can apply this to our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, now God was talking to a nation and they were getting ready to go into a time of, uh, of being conquered and exile. All of that is true. But it doesn't rob that scripture of its power to say for each and every one of us, God says, I have a future for you. I have good plans for you. I have things I want to do in your life. If you will trust me and follow me, I will lead you to the future I have for you. I have to hold on to that promise in Psalm 107. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Even if it doesn't feel like right now everything is good, I trust that God is good. God wants to give you hope for the future that he has for you. Paul asks this question in Romans 8, verse 31. He says this, if God is for us, a little bit of a rhetorical question, because what he's saying is God is for us. He says, if God is for us, Who can be against us? Right, think about that. The all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. If he is for you, if he is on your side, if he wants what's best for you, if that kind of God is for you, Paul says, who can be against you? No, No one else could ever do anything that could take you away from the plans God has for you. The only one that can do that is you. If God is for you, who can be against you? He goes on to show us. He who did not spare his own son. You want to know how much God is for you? He didn't didn't spare his own son. God loves you so much that he stepped into our world, that he sent Jesus to to show us what he's like, to, to explain to us, to give us a path back to God, but that wasn't all. He sent him to die for our sins so we could be forgiven, so we could be made right with God. He said, but, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? When, when you realize, when you, when you finally come to the place that the not yet has turned into now, you're not, 
You're, you're not standing in line trying to prove to God that you're worthy, and one day God will work in your life. Chris, Christmas showed us God stepped into our world. The not yet has turned into the now, that God is for us. When you realize that, it changes how you live. Let me give you three ways that it changes how you live. When I believe God is for me, here's the first one, I stop hiding from him and I run to him. Because if you don't really believe God is for you, why are you going to run to him? Right? When, when, when you don't believe someone is really on your side or for you, you do everything you can to stay away. Like, I don't want to be around that person. I don't think they're on my side. Same in our relationship with God. When we don't believe he's for us, our first inclination is to run Oh, wait, Adam, at the very beginning of time, Adam and Eve struggled with this, the character of God, right? You know the story. God creates them. God puts them in the garden. The Bible talks about God comes and walks with them each day, fellowships with them. Adam and Eve sin. They do what God told them not to do. Sin enters in, and all of a sudden, one of the things that sin took away from us is our trust in a loving God. Now they're afraid of him. Now they don't know if they can really believe him. Is he really for them? So look at this, Genesis 3, 10. So God comes, calls Adam's name, and it says, Adam answered, I, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. He, he realized because he had sinned. Now he was ashamed. He had disobeyed. And it says, so I hid. Now, now if you think about that, it's kind of funny. Who is he hiding from? God. Like, God can't find you, right? I, I, I mean, Adam's hiding from God. This is God. He created you. He can see you. He knows where you are. And yet, yet Adam's running and hiding because he's not sure he could trust the nature of God. Kids do this. Kids and family, at least, at least ours did when they're little, as they're trying to figure out, mom and dad really love them, can we trust them? Child does something wrong. I can remember Zuri, our youngest, when she was two or three, right? She'd do something wrong that she knew was disobedient, and here's what she would do. She'd kind of go over to the side, maybe on the sofa or in a chair, and she'd go. Because as long as she couldn't see us, maybe we couldn't see her either. So what's she doing? She's hiding. And you're thinking, looking at her, and you know, you're, you, you kind of get tickled as an adult. You laugh a little bit. You chuckle because you think, do you even know that that's not hiding? I can see you. You're right there. That's kind of the way it is when we hide from God. We, we just kind of shut ourselves off. It's like we're closing our eyes, and God's going, oh, don't, 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 don't hide from me. I, I, I see you. God trying to remind us I'm for you. What, you. You know the ways we hide from God? We maybe stop going to church so much. Maybe we stop our, going to our small group or with our service team. We don't show up. Maybe we hide from God. We don't open the Bible. Because we're like, well, I, I really don't want God to, 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 to see me now. Maybe we, we kind of hide from God by we stop talking to him. It's the same as my daughter closing her eyes. We're, we're, we're running from God. When you realize that if you're a follower of Jesus, you've been adopted into his family, that, that, that you are his son or his daughter, when you realize that, you won't hide from him. He doesn't come to, 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 to beat you over the head. He doesn't come to hold you down. He doesn't come to destroy your life. He comes to set you free. He comes to lift the burden. He comes to give you life. If we really believed he was for us, he'd be the first place we would go. The Bible tells us in 1 John, 1 John 1, 9. It's, it's not there on the screen. But in 1 John 1, 9, listen, it's written to Christians it's not written to sinners that don't know Christ yet. It's written to the church. It's written to us. And he talks about when we fall, when we fail, when we give into temptation, when we disobey. Us, followers of Christ, yes, all of us battle through that at times in our lives. So it's written to us, so don't put it off on somebody else. It says us, if. We confess our sin. Right? Instead of running and hiding, 
If we confess our sin to him, if we go to him, run to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Nowhere in there does it say God's going to be mad at you, God's going to punish you, God's going to get you. It says he wants to restore you. He's faithful and just. He'll forgive you and he will cleanse you. Proverbs 18.10 says this, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Listen, if you're hiding from him today, here in the room, there online, you don't have to hide anymore. God is for you. The not yet can turn into now where he can relieve you of the burden and the shame and the guilt. He can change your life. Here's the second thing. When I believe God is for me, I stop living for his approval and live from his approval. So if, if you could get a hold of this, it would change everything. All of us wrestle with trying to prove ourselves to God. We're living to get God to approve us. If I do this, maybe God will love me. If I do a little more of this, maybe, maybe God will like me. And so we wrestle with this and we go, hey, I had a good day. I told somebody, God bless you. God loves me today. Oh, I got angry today. God doesn't love me today, right? We, we, we play this game that we're always trying to live for God to finally say, hey, I love you. Listen to this scripture. This lets you know how much God loves you and it has very little to do with you it's his choice to love you, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners. You get that? Not because you proved it. Not because you earned it. Not because you were finally good enough. Not because you prayed enough. Not because you went to church enough. Not because you read your Bible enough. It was his choice. He loved you before you ever even knew he was there. He loved you when you knew he was there and chose to run the other direction. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, so many of us, we're such performance addicts. Right? It's like, oh, what else do I need to do? I need to do something to get God on my side. I better get involved in this. I better start doing that. We, we, we don't even recognize that God says, hey, hey, wait, wait. I'm already for you. you. You don't have to try to prove anything to me. Live from this whole different position in life that says, okay, I'm already approved. I'm already accepted. I'm already in love. Okay, God, what do you want me to do? Because now, instead of trying to earn your favor, I'm realizing you gave me all of this to change my life. So, some people, they do this when they read the Bible. They read the Bible because they feel like, I gotta read the Bible. I have to to show God that I'm worthy. And so the Bible becomes a burden. Uh, right? We would say in, 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 in the U.S., we would say, uh, like to use the phrase, I have to, there's a slang phrase that says, I got to. Right? I don't know if you guys use that here, but it's like, oh, I got to. Oh, I got to do this, and I got to go to church, and I got to pray, and I got to read the Bible. I mean, that just looks miserable, doesn't it? You, you know why? Because we're always trying to get God's approval. And so we live in the got to. What, what, what if instead we went, okay, God, so you loved me. You showed how much you love me. You've already approved me. And then uh, you send me a message. You, 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 you gave me your word so that, so that I could know you better. You, you gave me your word so that because you already love me and you're already for me, you, you gave me your word so that it would help me, so that it would teach me, so, so that I could find the life you have for me. I mean, doesn't that just sound better? And, 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 and it's all a change in the way our, our, our mind works. Instead of trying to win God's approval, we go, no, 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 that's already been settled. I live from God's approval. You know what it does? It changes the I got to's into the I get to's, and that'll change everything. I don't got to pray. I get to pray. 
the creator of the universe has invited me into a relationship with him, has invited me to talk to him, has even said, I will talk back to you. I will give you direction. I will give you understanding. I will give you wisdom. Understand how, doesn't that just change the way you think about, ah, oh, wait, I don't have to live to try to earn his approval. He's already shown me. I am for you. Now, live from that spot. Turn the I got to's into the I get to's. Here's the last one for today. I'll go ahead and ask the worship team if they can make their way back up to the stage. When I believe God is for me, I stop being afraid of what might happen to me because I know he's working in me. When you truly believe this, what happens is it gives you a whole new outlook on life. The storms of life, the struggles of life, the things we don't understand. All of a sudden, instead of always being afraid of them, we go, no, no, no. I trust him. I, I trust his word, and he's already shown that he is for me. So now all I've got to figure out is what does he want me to see? Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in, in what? Oh, come on, y'all help me out. We know that in, you know, if you looked up in the Greek, do you know what that phrase, all things, really means? All things. It means everything. There's no hidden message. There's no secret. He says, in all things, ups, downs, storms, highs, lows, valleys, mountaintops. He says, in all things, God works for the good. Right? Because he's for you. God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We serve a God who is so much for us and he's so good that he works in all things. He goes on, Philippians 2.13 says this, for it is God who works, where is he at work? God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Okay, put that together. God says, I'm at work in all things. And God says, my power now is at work in you. So he takes all things in our life, working them for good according to his plan, according to his purpose for us. I mean, when you realize that God really is for you, you, you stop going crazy when things happen that you don't quite understand because you start going, you know what? I believe God is for me. I believe he's going to bring good according to his purpose because that's what he says. When you believe that, it's life changing. Because here's why. So many of us live asking God, why? Why, God? You, you, you know what? At, at, the, at the base level, you know what why is? Why is a question that says we don't really trust him? Why are you allowing this, God? Why am I going through this, God? Why is it happening, God? And so I, I'm going to give you a way to put this in practice. Change your why questions into what questions. God, what do you want me to see in the middle of this? Right? Because I, I believe you're good. We already settled that. I, I, I believe you're for me. We've already settled that. Your word says that you're at work in all things, that you're at work in me to bring about your pleasure, to bring about your purpose for my life. So instead of why, God, what if you just started going, okay, God, I don't understand this, but what do you want me to learn through this? I don't understand this, God, but what are you trying to show me? God, I don't understand why I'm, why I'm walking through this, but what do you want me to do in the middle of this? Changes everything. I, I, I've watched as, as amazing people. Now, do we all struggle with the whys? Yeah. It's not a sin to ask them. It's just a position you live from. I've watched as an amazing lady that we've come to know that had a cancer diagnosis. And you could sit there and go, why? Why, God, why? And instead of just saying why, I, it might have been different words, but they asked the question, okay, I don't understand this. 
what do you want me to do in the middle of this? And it's taken a cancer diagnosis and treatments and turned it into a ministry to other people struggling, walking through cancer. Meets with them, prays with them, loves them. When God decides to call them home, is with their family when they go through the grieving process. I mean, is this easy? No, not at all. But man, it changes the way we live. God's not somewhere far off. He's here now. And he says, oh, if you would, if you would just turn the whys into, okay, God, what, what do you want me to do now? Because that says I trust you. That says I know that you are for me. Now, I get it. Sometimes life feels like it's a setback, right? What if, what if sometimes, though, your setbacks are setups for the future? I, I heard a, a minister give an illustration that I just liked. He talked about a bow and arrow. He said, you know, before the arrow could go forward, it has to go in reverse, right? So if you just put the arrow on the bow and you didn't pull it back, it would just fall down. He says, so what does the archer do? He takes and he pulls the arrow back. Now, what if the arrow had a brain? The arrow would be going, I'm going in the wrong direction. Why am I going in the wrong direction? Why is this happening to me? Why am I backing up? That's us, isn't it? Instead of just trusting the hands of the archer who says, oh, just wait. Just wait and see. I'm taking everything, all that you are, all that you've been through, I'm taking everything and I'm going to work it out for your good and for my glory. And the archer pulls that bow back and when it's ready, it flies faster probably than it ever thought it could. What if God being for you means there are times in your life that he wants to do that? That he just says, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I am for you. I have plans for you for a hope and a future. I am taking everything that's going on in your life, all things. I'm at work in all things. And I'm going to use them for your good and for my glory. I am at work in you to fulfill my purpose in your life, I'm telling you, if you could get a hold of that, it would change everything. Will you bow your heads with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the reminder this Christmas season of what Christmas really means. That you appeared. You stepped into our world, that you turned the, the waiting, the longing, the not yet into now. For all of us, for all of time. So God, I pray over your people today. Lord, first for those who, who believe. They, they've put their trust and their hope in you. They, they prayed to ask you to be their Lord and Savior but they struggle. And right now, Lord, it, uh, maybe some of them are hiding. And they know, they know deep down they can't hide from you. They just feel like staying away from you because they're ashamed, they're afraid. They carry their guilt with them. Lord, would you let them know you are for them. You're not here to push them under. You're here to lift them up. Father, I pray, let them run to you today. Come out of hiding. If there's something they need to confess, to confess and to be free. And to leave this place knowing that you are for them. Lord, I pray for those that struggle with living for your approval. God, it's just become a cycle in their life where they never quite feel good enough. For a while, they do really good. 
they reach that place where they just want to give up. Because they know they can never make it on their own. They can never do enough to earn your favor. God, would you let them know today they can stop trying to earn your favor, that you already love them. That you, you change the whole position they live from. They don't have to constantly be trying to win your approval. They can turn the got-tos into a get-to. You approve them, and now they get to live for you. But I pray, help them see themselves the way you see them. As a son and daughter of the king, seated in the heavenlies, joint heirs with Jesus Christ himself. And Lord, I pray for those who have got stuck in why it's such an easy place to get lost and Lord just changing the question we know it doesn't mean we're going to understand everything it just helps us to trust you so Lord today may, may you help us quiet down the whys and start asking okay God what what do you want me to do what do you want me to show? What do you want to show me? What do you want to teach me? What do you want me to do in this situation that I didn't ask for, but I believe you work all things out for my good and for your glory. Encourage your people today. And Lord, lastly, I pray for those who Maybe they're here and they don't have a relationship with you. And inside they struggle with believing that you're good and that they can trust you. Lord, would you let them know today that you are for them? But God, speak the truth into their heart. There is something that's against them and it's sin. And it's their sin Nature, We've sinned against a holy God and our sin separates us from you. It doesn't mean you don't love us. It means our choosing ourself over you has created a barrier. But God, that's what we celebrate at Christmas, that you sent your son to remove the barrier so that we didn't have to be distant, carrying our guilt and shame. You sent your son into the world because you are for us. And Jesus, you came and lived a perfect life, a sinless life. You went on the cross and you took all of our sin and all of our shame upon yourself. And when you died and rose again, you offer forgiveness and freedom to all of those who believe in you. So God, I pray today for those that this is the day put their trust and hope and faith in you. God, lead them to that place. Lord, I pray even now as, as we do what we do every Sunday, as we have a, a time of prayer at the end, may they be bold enough to find someone to talk to. May they make that statement from their heart. God, I believe and would you let them know in that moment, everything changes. Would you stand with me here in the building? We've been doing this every Sunday. We'll continue. I, I am a believer in prayer. I'm a believer that there are times when, when it's not just enough for us to pray silently to God. Sometimes God puts us together in a family so we can stand together in prayer. So someone else can share. The Bible talks about carrying each other's burdens and praying for each other is a way we do that. And so we're going to do this each week. 
We're going to close with a song. Our worship team's ready. I'm going to invite our, our elders and our prayer team, the wives of our elders, to please just come and join me here in the front. And while we sing this last song, we'll dismiss as soon as the song's over. But while we sing this song, man, if there's anything going on in your life that you would like prayer for, I'm walking through a storm, I'm walking through a valley. Maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe somebody in your family's sick. Maybe you're getting ready to, to travel and you just say, hey, I just, just want to be at peace about all of this. Man, we would be honored to pray with you. Let me go ahead and ask our, our elders, our men, our ladies, their wives, they'll go ahead and come and join me here in the front. While our worship team leads us in this song, if there's anything we can pray with you about, please come and find someone to pray with. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His dread. We give a praise to our God who has everything in his control for he is sovereign. Can we all raise our hands for the benediction? May the love of our God the Father, the grace and mercy of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the continual powerful presence of the Holy Spirit 
be with us now and forever. Church, you may go and be a blessing and a shining light to many others. God bless you. Thank you.